price of one. Super pie, extra discount, 21 cents for macaroni. There's a long goodbye, and it happens every day. When Paul Thomas Anderson was three years old, Robert Altman made the long goodbye an irreverent update on the classic private detective character, Philip Marlowe. Only in Altman's version, he's a comic figure. Well, I'm this here private investigator who was sent here this afternoon to uh, find you, but the good doctor here dummied up. Beyond that, it's a film concerned with Los Angeles. The people, the vibe, and general way of life at one moment in time, which happens to be Paul Thomas Anderson's childhood. PTA grew up in Los Angeles and has named The Long Goodbye as an influence. This video essay will dive into some visual examples of that influence. It's not easy to pin down PTA's directorial style, but when I recently rewatched The Long Goodbye, I noticed some similarities to Inherent Vice, Magnolia, and Punch Drunk Love, to be specific. Then I did some digging and found that Paul Thomas Anderson is well aware of Robert Altman's huge catalog of films. So let's dive in. I'm going to show you side-by-side -side comparisons of The Long Goodbye with films made by PTA. I'll keep The Long Goodbye on the left side, like here, and you can tell it apart from PTA's films because it has that distinct, hazy, picture postcard quality, while PTA films are always crisp and boldly lit. First off, who is Robert Altman? He's definitely prolific. The Long Goodbye was released in 1973, in the middle of Robert Altman's golden period, arguably one of the greatest runs by a director in the history of movies. Years ago, in the 70s, Bob Altman would make a film a year, maybe a fi two films a year. Among other things, he's the only American director who made the slow pan and zoom a personal trademark, as well as overlap in dialogue. And he often has star-studded ensemble pieces that take place in California. Actors loved Altman, I think, because his directorial style relied on long takes and allowed them to stretch out and stay in character. The story wasn't any good. We shot the whole thing without cuts. I hate all this. Cut, cut, cut. Altman often worked with the same actors over and over again. You know who else does that? Exactly. While it's no internet secret that Barry's blue suit in Punch Trunk Love seems to point to Philip Marlowe's in The Long Goodbye, since both characters spend nearly their entire respected movies in that costume, but there are other connections between Robert Altman's film and the work of our beloved PTA. Did this brief abstraction of light and color influence artist Jeremy Blake to create the motion paintings in Punch Drunk Love? Jeremy Blake wrote a song called The Long Goodbye in 2017 but it's a different Jeremy Blake. The Jeremy Blake who made the motion paintings committed suicide 10 years earlier in 2007. According to an eyewitness report, Blake was seen walking into the ocean, precisely how Roger Wade kills himself in The Long Goodbye. And I would like to think that this is only a matter of chance. It is in the humble opinion of this narrator that this is not something that happened. This cannot be one of those things. <laughs> Elements by Henry Gibson. Henry Gibson was a comic actor for television whose dramatic talents are used in this scene where he goes toe to toe with a drunken oaf of a character, and Gibson proves himself to be able to handle somebody who is out of control. He does so in Magnolia years later. Why don't you run along now, friend? The dessert is getting cold. I'm sick. Stay that way. I'm sick. Get ah, hurt. Mind your own business. Gently, son. This is the word you see constantly in people writing about the film, Altman-esque. Mm -hmm. It's in my DNA, you know, it's that I grew up watching those movies and seeing those movies. So, you know, it's, it's just informed me and informed how I want to tell stories. Uh, some guys are like that. So, what is it you want with me? Inherent Vice is a twisty mystery that drives its main character in circles. Like The Long Goodbye, you have a smart-ass private detective who finds himself spiraling into a convoluted mess that involves an offbeat psychiatric institute. The quirky doctor who walks the hero through their facility also holds a prominent older figure against his will, whom the detective is tasked to rescue. You'd like to go home, wouldn't you? Oh, I'd like to go home. Yeah, I'd like to go home, and I'm going home. 
I'm here to help you. You were sent here to find me? Why? Well, I'm supposed to bring you home if that's where you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> On top of all these similarities, PTA also pays homage to Altman's long takes, sometimes covering an entire scene in only one shot. But the concept of inherent vice, that someone you trust has something untrustworthy about them, that quality is evident in the characters of Shasta and Marlowe's friend Terry Lennox. In both films, helping out an old friend gets one into a lot of trouble. PTA was the standby director on Altman's final film, A Prairie Home Companion. Altman had heart surgery, and in case of illness or death, PTA would be there to pick up the directorial reins. Altman died in 2006, and Anderson dedicated There'll Be Blood to his memory. It's not often that you get to work with your heroes, although, in a way, when you pay homage to them, you do work with them.